Hi guys and welcome to the third episode in my series on international trade. Today we're going to be looking at the implementation of a tariff, but in this case we'll be looking at a large country. In the last episode in my series, we spoke about small countries. Small countries were unique because they can't influence the world price. Large countries can. So for example, a small country would be Luxembourg. If Luxembourg placed a tariff on a imported good, it's not going to influence the world price because they're very small and insignificant. France, for example, if they were to place a tariff on cheese imports because they're one of the world's biggest consumers of cheese, that's going to influence the world price. OK, so we have the same setup as before with the left hand diagram representing the home market and the right hand diagram representing the foreign market. The main difference here is that the foreign export supply curve is upward sloping. Why is this? The reason for this is that the price of exports from the foreign market will respond when the large country changes its import demand. So let's see this through an example. Let's say that the home market is France. And France imports a specific type of cheese from Switzerland. So let's say Swiss cheese. And let's say that they import 80% of the amount of exports from Switzerland of this cheese. Hence, therefore, if France change how much they import of this cheese, they're going to influence the price because they're such a big player in this market. In the perfectly competitive example with the small country that we saw in episode 1, foreign export supply curve was horizontal because they couldn't influence that price because it was a perfectly competitive market. We're now moving away from those assumptions. So let's see here that the price, the world price PW leads to the domestic market supplying S1 and the domestic market demanding D1, therefore importing M1 units of cheese from Switzerland, M1. And let's go ahead and introduce a tariff. Now, as we can see, the price has increased from PW to P star plus T. And the important thing to note here is that rise is less than T units. What do I mean by that? Well, we can write it down up here and say that P W to P star plus T is actually less than from P W to P W plus T. Why is this? The reason for this is because essentially the producers are absorbing part of this tax. Precisely, they're absorbing this amount of that tax. This is because the foreign producers are now accepting a price of P star. Why is that? Well, it all links back to the idea of this upward sloping foreign export supply curve. Like I said, the foreign export supply curve shows that the price of exports from the foreign market will respond when the large country changes its import demand. And as we can see, the tariff has changed the import demand to a lower level M2. Hence, therefore, the foreign market, Switzerland, is now exporting a lower amount to France, M2. So they've essentially forced down the price for those producers. So then we can go ahead and look at the welfare effects of this tariff for the large country case. And we must bear in mind that this foreign export supply curve in upward sloping is unique to the large country case as they can influence the world price. Okay, so we're going to shift X star plus T up by T units because we're saying that for every unit, the marginal cost has now risen by T units for the foreign exporters. So I've labelled the areas in the triangles and the boxes as A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So we're going to start off with looking at the consumer surplus. So the prices in the domestic market have risen from PW to P star plus T. Now this is going to have a negative effect on the consumer surplus. So consumer surplus is the area bounded by the demand curve and the price. 
Hence, therefore, we have a fall in consumer surplus of A, B, C, and D. What about producer surplus in the domestic market? So we're not talking about producers in Switzerland. We're talking about the producers of this cheese in France. Well, they were supplying S1 in the domestic economy. Now they're supplying S2. And they can charge P star plus T because that's the price that the Swiss are now charging when they include the tariff. So the domestic producers actually get an increase in producer surplus A. Remember, the producer surplus is the area bound by the supply curve. And then what about tax revenue? Well, they're getting T as a tax revenue, T, and they're importing M2 down here. So therefore, we get tax revenue of C and E. So C plus E. If we calculate the overall net benefits, we can say A cancels out with A, C cancels out with C, and therefore we get an overall welfare ambiguous result of plus E units minus B minus D. And therefore, a tariff for a large country is ambiguous. It's ambiguous. So in the small country case, we said it was unanimously bad. In this large country case, we can't say with much certainty if it's going to be positive or if it's going to be negative. Quick thing to add here, E can be seen as the terms of trade gain for the domestic market. This is because they forced down imports into their economy to P star, and therefore they get a gain in terms of trade. Terms of trade is the amount of exports they get for every import. As imports have now reduced in price, they now get a terms of trade gain of E.